All right, everyone, welcome to the set five Shimmering Skies set review. We're going to be starting off with each of the colors, going first with Amber here, going down the row. I'm going to be doing a rating skill out of five. I'm going to be a little bit harsher than I was before uh, on my grading scale. I gave a lot of playable, but not fine. You know, I'm going to be ones that you're going to see at your kind of tournament tables or not. Um, and as I say all that, I am going to start off with uh, Coda. It's actually going to fall right in the middle because I'm not sure. <laughs> so that one's. A bit of a misnomer for what I just said about being a little bit more harsh. Uh, during your opponent's turns, you can't lose lore. Uh, it's an interesting card. Um, it can just sit there and you know prevent any kind of lore from being lost, which isn't too common in the game. Um, but it being a reasonable body, two one for two with two lore, uh, means it's an aggressive card. It can fit in some decks, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it see some play. Uh, again, there's not too much lore loss going on in the game. But if there is, this would be a nice tool to have. Kind of a hate bear, literally a uh, hate bear. The first hate bear being a bear. Uh, in the game, so yeah, that's a fine card. Don't expect to see too much of it right away, but if the metagame evolves in a way where there is some lore loss going on, then then great. Uh, Nala, Mischievous Cub, uh, kind of a counterpart to Neverland, and I think um, Deville Manor, the locations that were one cost, uh, one to move, and four willpower, they're kind of like the character versions of this. Uh, I'm not too excited to see either of these. These are going to get ones, both the ones we're going to see. They're fine, maybe for limited play, but I don't expect to see much of them uh, in constructed events uh, at all. Unless there's a ship target down the line with Nala, not going to see these. We're going to move on from this and be a bit more amped up about the next card, Prince Naveen. All right, this, I know there's a lot of people going back and forth about, you know, what's the best card in the set. And this is, for for me, I think not the best card, but it's close to it. Um, and this one is going to get a solid, I think, solid four rating uh the only thing preventing it from being a solid five of course is it being uninkable prince Naveen's a card that's going to kind of change how a lot of decks are built i think in this game and a lot of things we have to reevaluate based off of how uh we've looked at other songs in the past usually we've evaluated them off of being uh five cost or less uh and this one kind of opens the door up to being six cost or less five cost or less of course being from ariel and the other shift characters like uh queen and and robin hood in the steel songs decks um, this is just another wrinkle to that. I think this card is very strong. It actually makes, in my opinion, the uh, downside of going second uh, less felt in the mirror match than it otherwise would have been, mainly because you get to play catch up as well as uh, present a threat in some way. You get to play this, play along came Zeus, to take out your, their singer, and then also present your own so that then they're stuck in the same position to have to catch up on board and develop because that's really a lot of how the Amber Steel Songs deck uh, plays is it's a lot of momentum shifts and this being able to do two things for the cost of one while being a reasonable body elsewhere even if you don't have a song you know three uh, four cost three three not that great questing for two fine but mainly the three three stats and two lore is going to be enough a lot of the times and I've, I've definitely cast the card along came zeus uh several times just for four ink and i can only imagine getting a three three for two lore on top of that as well and the dreams of course being able to play this earlier with cards like a lantern uh or pluto or anything like that that goes from two to four even if you maybe one jump ahead maybe some amber sapphire we'll see but no, this is a very strong card i expect to see it a lot and it's something i'm i've already included in some of my decks i have the proxy up over here already uh ready to go so i'm gonna be playing with this a ton big fan uh not quite a five because it's not inkable if it was inkable this would be an easy five one of the best cards in the game, period. Uninkable, holding it back a little bit, but still very, very strong. Uh, not just in Steel Song, but probably Emerald Emerald Amber is going to be playing something like this as well, just to catch up. You can't use this in conjunction with uh, uh, Under the Sea. It can't count towards six of it and use two other to sing. You can't do anything like that. But when it's in play, you can, uh, but not not when it enters play effect. But yeah, not going to dwell too much on it. It's a very, very good card. I think I've said enough. Uh, and four stars, a solid, solid rating. Um, Rut, Northern Moose, Support, Yawn. Um, I almost played this in set one, the Merlin. Um, but, you know, I didn't uh, in some in some constructed decks, so I'm going to give this one a pass, too. Not exciting. Moving right along. Uh, Kenai, Big Brother. What is exerted? Your codas can't be challenged. Uh, two costs, two, one, four. Uh, I'm, I'm not excited. It's like a bodyguard for one character specifically. Its stats aren't great. There's a bunch of things, even at this stat line, we can have an Ursula that sings for four. Uh, this is not going to see much play. Cool limited card. Glad it exists. Uh, big fan of it in general. Uh, Vanellope von Schweetz. Uh, love it. Love the love the card. I'm giving the one cost two twos pretty much a two, even though this does have a shift line, which is reasonable. I really think that the power level of these cards are more aligned with um, their shift characters less so than the one cost characters these are all replaceable they're all fine it'll see play but in a deck that only wants the the shift character and really its playability is contingent on the shift line that you see so 
Nothing too exciting, of course. Uh, four cost, four, four. Not, I mean, stats for Amber is actually pretty strong. There's actually very few Amber cards with four strength. I think the only one that was cheaper than five was uh, the Eric's dog from Ariel, the, the dog. I don't remember his name. He's a three cost, four, three. That's cheaper if you have an Eric in play. But yeah, this one uh, we're not going to see much of. There's plenty of better options. Uh, moving on with this one here, not dwelling on the cool art and things like that. Lilo, uh, Junior Cake Decorator in Abomination, Peanut Butter and Pineapple. I don't really like pi uh, pineapple too much, and I'm allergic to peanut butter, so it's going to get a solid one from me. Uh, moving along, because this one's it's cool. I love the art. It's fun to, to play. I'm going to enjoy um, seeing this pack, so my daughter's going to love it, too. We're going to make this cake, I'm sure, at some point in time, uh, but not too exciting. Um, for right here, Vanellope von Schwitz. So this one is, I'll translate it because I can read the language perfectly. And I haven't just memorized what, what it does. Uh, when you play this character until the start of your next turn, chosen opposing character gets minus one strength till the next turn. Uh, an interesting one. It not just shrinks for the turn that you can then challenge into it, but it can, it can be a defensive option too, um, where you can just play this and then quest with some things that your opponent then can't use to challenge with their character. It's not great. Uh, I'm going to give this a two. There's a world where we could see this play, much like the, the one cost shifter. Um, the shrinking of the strength could work towards... Uh, maybe making a Sisu not be able to gain lore off of Flynn or something along those lines since it does take place during their turn as well. So there's a niche application for it. So that's why it's not getting a one, but not a thrilling card to begin with. Um, next up here, Fixit Felix Jr. Two costs, or sorry, three costs, two, four with Bodyguard. Eh, I'm, I'm nowhere near excited enough. Uh, not even in set one, I don't think. Maybe set one, but not really much uh, here to see. Um, yeah. Gazelle, uh, pop star. So it's a singer five. So uh, similar to the set two Gaston, which was a three three with singer five. Um, this one is essentially one less strength for one more lore. While typically that's a good exchange, uh, the ability of singer isn't really something you care too much about the lore with uh, on your characters. Uh, if you're primarily playing this card in your deck to be a singer five, then you should be playing Gaston because then it won't die to a brawl. If you're playing this card in your deck to be a quester, there are better questers with abilities that you can play in Amber, uh, like uh, the Mulan that just has support would be better in that sense. So it's kind of conflicting in my mind. The the singer and the extra lore aren't actually something you want about. Obviously, if you don't have a, a song to sing at Quest for Two, which is better, but I think that you have to be planning for better case scenarios when you're building your deck, less so than like playing around the worst case scenarios by having a backup plan on the card itself. I'd rather be playing a better card. Uh, it's not unplayable to two. Um, maybe there's some situations where you want to be questing and maybe there's a more heavy lore uh, based deck where you're just focused on really singing five cost songs, like just whole new world. And, and that's it to where this could um, play into it. And the lore then matters when you don't have it. Cause you're more likely than not, not going to have it, but not too exciting. Fix it, Felix Jr. So this is a shift three, and we'll get to the shift target here in a minute. Uh, shift three, and it has a four or five body. It's pretty big. Uh, it has one lore, but it makes your locations get plus two willpower. Um, pretty strong for its size, shift three. There's no one cost shifter. I'm going to go ahead and spoil that one, um, which would make this card go from being very good to just marginally okay, I think. Um, but the ability to buff your locations... So how many times have we looked at locations and just been like, man, if this had one more lore to get out of Maui range, while that line of thinking is good for uh, just the the organic card itself of the location, the fact that it has to be a part of a body that you have to not then quest with to make it vulnerable, because this, this card is vulnerable to Maui itself. Maybe if this is a 5-4. Um, I'm going to give this one a 3. I think it's actually close. I'm going to do the half thing here. So 2.53, somewhere around there. It's it's okay enough to where I think that it's going to be seeing some kind of play, maybe in a heavy location-based uh, deck uh, with one locations we'll get to in a little bit. But it is a solid card. It's not the best thing ever. It's not a high rarity either, uh, so it's kind of impressive for an uncommon. But a solid card. And I think I think there may be some spots for it down the road too, if not just this set as well. Kristoff, one of the first cards we actually saw from this set. Uh, first five-star. Oh, the three and the two. Yes, but the... Um, for each song card in your discard, you pay one less to play this character. So we were going to see a cycle of these, one less for each X. Now, originally, I thought that this was going to be something similar to Chernabog, and I was kind of surprised that this one didn't have a way to stop you from playing more than one at a time. But the body's not as good as Chernabog, so obviously they made it a little bit easier to play in that sense. Not saying that songs are easier to get in the discard than characters are, but the fact that you can chain more than one of these is pretty impressive. Um, I'm going to rate probably almost all of the... 
I'm going to call them giants because it's very analogous to the Hearthstone, Molten Giant, Mountain Giant type effect where it's cost less for each one. They're all big, oversighted characters. It's kind of fun to build towards. Uh, they're all probably going to get three. They're all super build around, so they're not generically powerful. Uh, well, maybe one of them is, but they're all build around to where you have to kind of commit to this type of deck. And that's really fun, and a lot of cool cool things can come from the style of decks if you kind of give yourself the restriction of, hey, I have to play four of this in my deck, and I'm going to go from there. So it's a lot of fun to think like that and try to build around. But a solid card, uh, Bodyguard, you know, be able to protect your, uh, in a song deck, your aerials um, or your Cinderella's or, or anything you really want to play. The body's not going to get Maui'd. It does get Medusa, but I'm going to start here and saying that if I see anyone in the comments or in the chat right now saying dies to Medusa for any card that you evaluate, I'm just going to get you know, ignore you entirely because there's no point in talking about that kind of thing where everything does, where if I have 15 cards in my deck that all died to Medusa, well, they only have three or four Medusas, so they're not going to be able to kill everything. But yeah, solid card. Uh, I can see, you know, a really kind of dream world where you get to play more than one of these in a turn. Be really powerful. It's a lot of lore for a very, you know, potentially low cost. And pairing with the whole new world is is just another avenue that you can take with uh, how to build this type of deck. But we'll see. I'm excited for it. I'm definitely going to try it when we can. Mirabella Madrigal. Um, I, so, hmm. this one's a tough one. Um, I inherently don't like the card, uh, period, because of the five. Uh, I think that's how most people feel. I think that, especially when you're looking at newer players, you want to give them something to be excited about. I don't think a single newer player is excited about this five. They're like, well, what does this mean? None of the other ones look like that. Sure, it's unique in that sense, but it's not unique in a cool way, where if there's actually just five pips on this, it'd be really cool. It actually might get a higher rating for me in that sense. That being said, there are some cards in the game that really care about having a uh, high lore count uh, in hand. I think the the Witch, uh, the Emerald 2, 3, 4, 3, and set 2, that's uninkable, that you, lets you discard a character to then gain lore equal to the amount of pips it has, the lore pips. Um, that can be played in that kind of deck, so maybe a, a Emerald Amber aggro deck. I really have a hard time seeing how this card's going to be played, because if you do the math on it when going first, um, you can't even play this on turn 5, actually, if you go first because you're only going to have 11 cards, and that's going to be 5 ink, 5 characters, and the 1. I guess that's exactly enough, isn't it? Sure. So exactly enough if you go first, because you have 11, 11 things, because you have 5 characters, 5 ink, and then this. So you can play this going first on turn 5 if you have no cards left in your hand, or if your cards drew a card off it. But hard to imagine this coming down uh, in an earlier way that would make just something that costs 6 potentially better than it. But who knows? Um, I'm going to give this one a 2. I think it's a very unique build around. It's potentially going to see play in some very niche decks, but I'm not thrilled to be building around it because it seems very hard to play. Uh, the cheat cards like Just in Time or Mufasa even, Mufasa's trigger, can't you can't play this unless you have five uh, characters in play off of Mufasa. It's not how that works. So really hard to play. Really cool dream to live, but it's not exciting enough for me. Um, so I'm, I'm not, not, not too happy about it, but yeah. Mini Mouse, Drum Major. So a 5 cost, 4-4, four, four, 2 lore. Shift 4, uh, when you play it, if you use your shift ability, which I, I really don't like that wording, but I get it, kind of, uh, you put a character essentially from your deck on, on top of your deck. Now you, you know, take a character out, shuffle your deck, put it on top. Uh, really cool with Mufasa. Um, if you can play a Mufasa and then you have the ability to trade into something with the Mufasa, you could use this right before doing so to then set up what you're going to flip with Mufasa. Really cool. You could set up a Maleficent Dragon or a Sisu if you need to. Um, really high potential there. And there are too many great shift lines. There's a couple. There's the one cost Ruby 1 3, uh, some of the things like that. Um, but this one's solid. I'm giving this one, I think, a solid 3.5. Let's do 3.5 here. It has some 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 unique potential uh, in Mufasa specifically, I think. And even so, just setting up your next draw to be the best you know, 5 cost character you can play doesn't seem that bad. Having to use shift, unfortunate for that trigger to happen, but I understand why, because otherwise this would be one of the best 5 cost characters in the game. Uh, just being able to always put the best card on top of your deck. Kind of always make sure you have the Tinkerbell if you need to. Always make sure you have the Tremaine, the Medusa, anything like that. But certainly a good card. Uh, I expect to see it in a lot of Mufasa decks for specifically the reason of being able to flip something with a challenging Mufasa if you have the ability to have something to shift onto. So solid card. I'm excited to play with it eventually down the line. We'll see. Um, but yes. Daisy Duck. Donald's date. Whenever this character quests, your opponent reveals the top card of their deck. If it's a character, they put it to their hand. Otherwise, they put it to the bottom. So it does put spells to the bottom. But if you're trying to think of it as a way to then make it so your opponent's less likely to draw a card like Grab Your Sword, it's actually not true because you're more likely to hit a character than not to then dig them to the Grab Your Sword than you are to actually hit the Grab Your Sword. So I wouldn't get too caught up in that 
ability, even though it can come up where they flip a grab your sword and they really needed it and it gets put to the bottom, it's more likely you're digging them to the grab your sword otherwise than otherwise. But this card, uh, really solid. I'm giving this a four. It's a very scary card, and I'm really glad this exists, however. Uh, it's the kind of scary card that's good for the game because a lot of this um, set has cards where you know, challenging becomes more important. And a lot of the game, as we've known it, has been able to ignore aggro for the most part in a sense that Steel will just take care of it. Steel can't take care of this. There's no singular action that kills this character other than a long came so far. Strength, Raging Fire, sure, or it needs a combination of cards. So the fact that we now have an actual aggressive threat that survives removal and isn't just something that can be swept up in some way, be prepared, you know, pending. But this is a solid card. I, I expect this to be ruining people's days. Uh, and, and the, the fabled triple triple DC duck will be something that'll be a very scary thing. I mean, it even has strength. I would have imagined this card to be a 0-4 in some cases, uh, but a 1-4 solid. Uh, this is just an incredible card. It's going to be very scary to play against. And Amber, unlike last set where we got basically nothing for Amber, uh, we've already had two bangers, I would say. Uh, they're uninkable, so they're not all-stars, but uh, really, really amazing cards. Now we have the other side of this, Fix-It Felix Jr., Delighted Sightseer. When you play this character, if you have a location in play, you can draw a card. So this is what we were using to uh, shift that larger Fix-It Felix, the 4 or 5 that gives locations a buff. Uh, this one benefits you already from having location in play by drawing a card, which is great. The amount of one-cost locations that you'd want to play right now is pretty low. Uh, I think right now you'd have to play a card like Neverland, or you could play uh, Hidden Cove or Forgotten Cove, the, the Emerald one that the uh, Emerald Steel decks have been playing in, in, that, uh, in, in the DLCs. But yeah, this is a solid card. Um, this one's getting a solid three, uh, much like the the, the shifter. It, it's just middle of the road. It's contingent on having something else. But hey, when you add draw a card onto a cheap, cheap character, it's pretty hard to go wrong in a lot of ways, um, which is always a scary thought. But it is a really cool card to have shift line, and it cares about you having a specific card type, which I do like. There's not enough location support right now. I wish there were more cards that were while at a location have a significant bonus of effect, but it's hard to make something like that without being too, too good as it stands. But solid card, love it. Um, I'm going to be trying out some Fix-It Felix combinations uh, in the near future. Uh, but yeah, look for it then. Moana. So we took uh, the wardrobe, shifted its color, and then gave it an extra lore pit, but removed its ink ability. Um, as excited as I was about Daisy Duck, the three-cost uninkable slot is a little bit hard to, to wrap your head around, I think. Uh, for me, I would rather have the more expensive cards, meaning more expensive than two, be inkable in most aggressive decks. This is a fine body, but the fact that it doesn't line up too well even against the card Sisu, the the one that's equal to the strength in your opponent's hand, um, while you can shrink your hand pretty quickly with an aggressive deck, this card isn't quite the same um, power level as that, I don't believe. Uh, this one's going to be, uh, give me a two and a half, I would say. It's not quite great. It's not quite terrible. It could show up if the right amount of inkables, you know, if your deck has some inkables to give and you're missing something on your turn three curve for maybe a hero or princess deck, it could be fine there. It's not amazing, but it, it's a fine body and it survives most things, which is nice. Uh, being able to trade with Fox is important. Uh, being able to, to survive any type of uh, smash or, or boom is nice. Uh, all those things. Uh, nothing's going to survive the Maui test, really. I'm not going to look for anything like that. Um, but yeah, solid card. Not too excited, but still. Vanellope von Schwitz, the Sugar Rush Princess. Uh, so shift two. So we saw the one cost one, two two, and we saw the two cost two two that shrunk your opponent's board by one or character by one. This one says when you play another princess character, all opposing characters get minus one till the start of your next turn. So this one's pretty strong. If there's going to be a Vanellope deck, it's going to be playing this, of course. Um, it really has to be kind of focused in on the princess aspect, and maybe there are a critical mass of princesses at this point to where it could be a thing. Uh, the effect is pretty dramatic for what it does as far as racing goes. However, it does really only pertain to things that are in play already. And as we've seen, most of the uh, ways people like to challenge come from Mim, Fox, and Maui. Uh, those are the two primary ways to, to challenge in, in every deck or use steel cards to then sweep up the board. But not to be overlooked is that this card is actually a, a shift line that goes from one to four, meaning it could help sing certain four-cross songs. You could sing How Far I'll Go, uh, Be King Undisputed if you're playing Ruby and Amber. Um, but having the ability to do that kind of thing is, is pretty cool. It can go from one to two and sing I'll Let the Storm Rage On. Uh, if you wanted to, is it the Storm Rage On? Yeah, the Storm Rage On. If you are playing it in a steel deck as well, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this card. I think this one's solid. I think this one's a solid three. I'm even going to give it three and a half. It's, it, it could be very powerful. And it's really good at breaking up board styles, much like the card Kida is. Kida lets you uh, just shrink all the board 
which then leaves you vulnerable to big sisu, but this one being one-sided can then make super favorable traits. And the fact that it is one-sided could really, really kind of swing the board in your favor, even if you're not using it as defensively to then quest with all your characters and survive. Using it offensively could be something too. So, big fan. Like the like the Vanellope. All right. Alan Adele, Rock and Rooster. Whenever you play a song, gain a lore. So f this is very similarly templated to Phil. Uh, Philatides uh, from the previous set was the 2-3 for 4, that when you play a hero, you gain a lore. Um, the differences between this card and that card are, I think heroes were a bit more... Um, easier to play. There are a lot more one-cost heroes than there are one-cost songs to play. Um, there are some cards in this set which you can combo with at some point uh, we'll get to, but I think I was ultimately, this card's going to be overshadowed by Naveen uh, from this set. I don't think it's a great card after much consideration. I'm giving it a two for that reason. I was initially excited about it, but I, I really have, have grown to think that it's not quite as good as it could be. Phil has... The static ability also of giving challenger, and I think that the uh, tr ability will trigger more often, and that card hasn't seen much play, mostly on the back of the fact that this is a four cost, two strength character, and it dying to brawl is unfortunate for a card that you want to stay in play and costs more than the removal you're playing anyway. So in this instance, yes, dies to brawl is a big deal for this card specifically, where some cards dying to brawl, I don't really care. This one specifically, because of how it curves, it can be really backbreaking at the wrong time. And when it's such a key card that you want to have, essentially, the turn after you play it, it can be hard to really make it work. But it's a cool card. Maybe the Pendril combo, which we'll get to uh, in another color, uh, Amethyst specifically, um, could be a thing down the road. But for now, I'm keeping this in the back pocket. Not super thrilled by it, but it, but it, could, it could work out. Wreck-It Ralph, Admiral Underpants. Who doesn't love Admiral Underpants? Why doesn't it say hero on the thing? I guess it doesn't, but... All right, when you play this character, return a card from your discard to your hand. If it's a princess character, gain two lore. Man, I really wish this was inkable. It'd be so cool if it was, but even though it's not, having a giant body... So this is a seven cost, six, seven. Huge, right? Not many things that you play are really this big. Uh, the only deck that I can see making use of this would be Mufasa currently, uh, mainly because tailoring it or tying it to Gaston... Lantern or Doc to, to reduce the cost, and the fact that that deck already has a lot of princesses, whether it be Vanellope, if you happen to play that in the same deck, uh, or a card like Mulan, or the Shift Mulan, or Rapunzel or all princesses to gain the lore, any immediate impact to the board in a body like this, and the lore gain that it presents immediately, can't really be dismissed immediately. I'm giving this a 3. It's speculative, because I think it could be one of the better top-end cards to play. I don't know if it beats out Surfer Stitch, but it's close to being a complementary card in that regard. Maybe to combo with our mini mouse that can then search for a card like this in, in a pinch and then gain the two lore when we need it to. So a solid card. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a C play in some capacity. It's just not the greatest card. If this was inkable, I would give it a, a bit higher rating. It'd be close to serve for Stitch on, on, on power level, I think. But yeah. Well, this one's smaller for some reason. Um, and so when you play this character, chosen opposing character gets minus five this turn. Uh, not at all exciting. Uh, I'm going to move on from this one. One star. It's uh, overcosted and, and under undervalued. But Sven. Sven, reindeer steed. Isn't that kind of redundant? Reindeer steed. Isn't steed another word for a horse type thing? Anyway. When you play this character, you may ready chosen character they can't quest or challenge. So unlike LeFou, or how Ruby does it, um, this card makes it so they can't challenge or quest. So it kind of just protects them. It's a protector. LeFou has seen minimal play even since it came out in the high progressive decks that helps reset cards like Maleficent. I expect this to do the same, actually. I actually think this card's pretty good. Uh, not quite like omnipresent good, but I think it's a solid three. It's a card that has a role to fill, and in the decks where it fills that role, being able to untap a Daisy Duck you know, on turn four at that point when they've developed a board to challenge it can really get you two more lore. And the fact that this is a two lore character in and of itself uh, is, is quite strong. Um, Amber's not going to be looking to challenge most things. It doesn't do that very well unless it's paired with Ruby, uh, which can challenge pretty well. It's not going to care about the challenging part. It's, it has the potential to reset a singer for you as well. You can use Ariel, sing something, and then play this after that. Sing with Ariel again, sure. Um, solid card. I, I think it will see quite a bit of play. Uh, I'm just not sure where specifically except for Hyper Aggro. Um, but I do welcome that. I welcome more aggressive decks uh, kind of making their way into the metagame. Okay, Minnie Mouse. So whenever this character quests, uh, I don't know if it's quest or when you play, but you can heal two damage. Um, 
this one's going to get uh, a one. It's not exciting. It's kind of whatever. It's a reasonable body, but yeah. I'm not really too thrilled to try this out. The healing aspect of it's nominal, but but not great. But yes. So this one, try everything. So similar to this Fen, uh, this one, instead of being a body, is a song that re removes three damage from chosen character. Um, if you really care about readying something again, potentially, you could play this, but there aren't too many things I would say. You can kind of see the difference here between Sven and this, where Sven's actually a, a reasonable body, and this one's just a song. I don't know what this will really help you with. Um, using a Singer 4 to untap a Singer 5 isn't really what I'm looking for uh, in a card. Uh, I'm giving this a 1. That 1 is perfect right there. It's going to stay right there. Um, yeah. Healing Touch, remove 4 damage from a chosen character, draw a card. We have a card that's heal 3, and it's a song. Uh, that doesn't see any play, so this one I'm guessing won't either. Uh, moving on. Uh, revive. Uh, it's an exciting card to exist in the game, but I don't think it's a very good card. Uh, this one's the potential to, like, you can't even build around it. This is a one. So there's no such thing as a build around with this card because anything you can play with this card, you could have just played otherwise. It's more copies of cards that have already gone away, which is fine, but it's also uninkable and. If your opponent just doesn't kill anything and they outrace you, it doesn't do anything. So against an aggressive deck, this does nothing as well. Um, I'm not excited to play with this card. Maybe it works with the Robin Hood, which we'll get to, uh, the, the Ruby one, because you get to put cards from your deck to your discard. And maybe this can be then used as one of the songs you'd find, or one of the cards you'd find, not, not song, uh, to then be played. But I'm not looking forward to this card uh, playing it or carrying it if it's played against me kind of thing. Maybe unlimited, sure. But eh, moving on. Blast from your past. This thing is having everyone go through the entirety of people's names and just trying to see what they can do with this. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm giving this one a two. Uh, it is uninkable and it's a song. It's getting a little bit higher rating than the other one because it has the potential to do something kind of interesting, namely with Kristoff, uh, the, the one that we just looked at where it cares about how many songs are in your discard and then it's cheaper. If they then deal with all the Kristoffs, you can then play this, get them all back and play them for free. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, potentially the only thing I can see really doing with this card so far. There are a lot of Simbas in the game, I think. Um, if there's a way to have you had discard them, the one cost one, two, that draws and discards, sure. Whole new world discarding them is fine, but then what do you do? You just have a bunch of cards in your hand, you can't really do much. Um, it's open-ended, which is kind of cool, but until we have something that lets you really discard for kind of value, like discard this card from your hand to, to do something for the turn, maybe uh, to get like an effect, maybe. But I so far have not seen anything to really do with this except for go through the whatever uh, search functionality we have and find all cards with the same name. Maybe the queen, or I don't know. But potentially good. Right now, I'm, I'm not, not looking forward to trying it out, but we'll see. Um, invited to the ball. Reveal the top two cards of your deck. Put all characters to your hand from this way and then put the rest in the bottom of your deck. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, this is a three. Um, in a ha all character or heavy character deck, it's a two cost draw two that Sometimes we'll hit itself, and then you'll be sad about it because you'll have to put the other one to the bottom. But more likely than not, it's a two-cost draw two, which is fine. Um, it's not exciting or thrilling, and usually I'd have better uses for... Um, yeah, if it's, yeah. Uh, usually I'd have better uses for uh, actions or items in my Mufasa decks than just to draw a couple cards, but it's not the worst. Uh, if this is your only uh, action in your Mufasa deck, that's fine. Uh, I... I would have to, to, to think about how that would work out, but it's a fine card. I uh, wouldn't blame you. Uh, in Limited, I'm sure if you have all characters, it's pretty cool, and any kind of advantage you can gain in Limited, I'm sure, is better too, but yeah, this one's uh, just fine. All right, next up. Healing Decanter. Uh, nope. Moving on. Healing cards have just not been in any way, shape, or form good, so I'm going to ignore that. Um, this one also has made me dive into all the characters that are princesses or queens. Uh, this one could be good. Um, this one's a fine card. I mean, the passive lore gain is similar to how flutes or uh, pride lands have been in some of the amber aggressive decks. Um, and the ability to then use this just to draw cards, similar to how we just saw the envelope be a draw for characters. If your whole deck is princesses or queens, this is just two cost to draw a card unless you hit this card if you have 56 characters and then four of these. Not unreasonable. Two cards of this in play plus a, a ward based queen or princess, which there are a couple. Um, could be good. Uh, I'm giving this a three. I've, I'm going to try and build around it to see if it's worth it. 
um, maybe you need something else to compliment, uh, you know, or reward you for being all princesses or queens. But this is a start, and it's an inkable card at the worst. Um, so yeah, it gets a three, and I'm gonna I'll try and build it out at some point, I'm sure. Uh, Amber, nope. One. Moving on. So, oh, lovely. Uh, Rapunzel. Uh, Rapunzel's Tower. So I had to be with this view because I always forgot how locations suck. Two costs, one will uh, one to move and eight willpower. Um, characters get plus three while here. It does not have any lore pips. So much like Hidden Cove, I called out in my previous set review for set four, that was going to be a location that saw play and ended up being the other location that saw play, even though it was vulnerable to Maui and didn't gain any lore, which people usually saw those as disqualifying reasons to play those cards. Um, this one's solid. This one's huge. There's three willpower being added for one to attach it and it has eight eight willpower itself with fix it felix this thing makes fix it felix a four eight that also makes this location a 10 willpower thing which is impossible to kill there's nothing that big really um yeah this one's solid uh this one's getting it three three and a half um it's in that range there i think this will see a good amount of play in any decks that want to keep their characters alive uh it is very strong at, at keeping these alive against any of the characters we've come to hate meaning uh you know mim fox just decimating anyone who, who decided to play an early game this one can help you out there sure mim fox can challenge this but there's eight to get through not one shot it's gonna take more than one and yeah sisu as well but if you empty your hand out quick enough those things aren't gonna be able to take anything out and some of your characters which might not be the strongest on their own in conjunction with rapunzel's tower or even let's just go a step further uh was it john silver <laughs> Was gonna have resist and gonna have a three eight with resist one by itself with just this in play. Having any other locations in play, that thing's just gonna be massive and impossible to kill outside of Ruby, which you can maybe try and get around a different way. But solid card. Uh, I'm expecting to see this card see a bit of play for sure. On the other hand, uh, this card Pride Lands, which I don't like its name because it's already a card that has the name Pride Lands and its location. Three costs, two to move, eight to uh, eight willpower, one lore. So the lore part's relevant. When you have three characters here, you may banish this location and play a character you can discard for free. Potential is the first kind of reanimation effect, uh, really, that can hit anything. Um, it does require you to essentially use nine ink to, to get this on. You get to pay three for it, have three characters, and then spend six moving them all there. Um, there are some ways to make moving characters places cheaper, which may come up at some point in time. I think it's the uh, treasure map um, that reduces cost, or some characters can move for free, I think. But... Uh, potentially good. Uh, I'm not certain what we'd reanimate. That'd be really that good. And when I say reanimate, that's an homage to uh, the Magic the Gathering card, reanimate, which returns a character from your discard to your to play directly. Uh, so that's what I mean by reanimate. Um, but yeah, this card's very interesting. Um, it does gain passive lore and have eight willpower. So that's one of the reasons for its rating. The ability I'm not as sold on, but just the passive lore and then the eight willpower uh, at its cost is reasonable enough to play in a lot of cases. Uh, and can distract from what's going on with all the other amber support for locations it could see a bit of play but i'm pretty excited for this one um definitely gonna try it out uh, i'm not sure if i can make it work specifically or what i'm bringing back honestly but we'll see yeah that's gonna be it for amber here